Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the 10 a.m. stretch class. I'm Jen. So today, the two props that we need, uh, we need two sticks. So if you have around the house, two broomsticks, I have two PVC pipes. Uh, these are both a little bit higher than five feet. The ideal would be ones that approximate your wingspan. <laughs> <laughs> so six feet it would be great for most people. And then I also have my yoga strap. Okay, so we are going to start this morning since we have the two just handy. We're gonna start with hinging using our two sticks. So this is a nice way to get into hinges, particularly if we have some restricted movement, we need a little extra support. This is a nice way to get into our hinge. We line them up like right inside our armpits, parallel running down to the ground, right about at your clavicle, okay? And you place your palms down on the tops of the sticks and they're pretty active into the sticks. So you get some tension through your lats. Feet are comfortably distanced apart. Mine usually slightly wider than my hips. I soften my knees and then I'm gonna exhale as I begin to hinge forward. And as I do so, I'm pressing pretty firmly into the sticks. And then once I get to the position where I need to stop, I wrap my fingers around the stick. And that way I can pause here and think about releasing through my glutes and hamstrings. Now to come up, I can exhale, press my heels to the ground and reverse my hinge, or you can use your sticks and crawl your way back up activating through your lats. So that's a really nice way to help come up if you're worried that you aren't gonna have that glute strength to pull you back up, okay? Let's hinge again, exhale as you go down. Laura will be doing a lot of this here in a couple months with the sticks, because you won't wanna use your glutes. All right, exhale, heels to the ground, activate low belly and glutes, reverse your hinge. It does, oh, it's a low belly. <laughs> and hinge one more time. Don't you feel like these are giant chopsticks? I always think that as they cross over my neck and I look up at everybody, they look like giant chopsticks that come together at the end. All right, exhale, heels, low belly, reverse your hinge and come to standing. All right, because we can't just do a plain old regular hinge, now we get to go down into a split stance hinge. Same setup with the sticks running right along your clavicles. All right, I like to start with my split stance, pressing my back heel through the ground, releasing through my quad, starting off with a nice little calf stretch. But then as I go into my hinge, I let that back heel come up. So let it rise up, palms down onto the sticks. Exhale as you hinge forward onto that front leg. Allow that knee to be bent. You want most of the body weight on that front leg. Yes, it should definitely be getting your glute, James. And you can play around here. Like, oh, are my hips in parallel? So drag them back in line, right? So that the um, flashlights pointing on your hips are shining straight down to the mat. Now, heavy front heel, exhale, hinge, low belly and rise. Good, we'll take that one more time. Exhale. Release like a feather floating down toward the ground, down into your split stance hinge. Good, now feel light on your back foot, lifting that heel off the ground, all the way up onto the balls of the feet, the toes, and then slowly move your body weight all over that front leg and let your back leg float up off the ground. Good, hold the weight of that floating leg in your hamstring. Try to align your hips in parallel. And then slowly rock back, allowing that back leg to return to the ground. All right, now pause before you rise because you wanna use those glutes. You wanna come up 
a reverse hinge and not a roll. Exhale, reverse hinge from the glutes back to standing. All right, now let's switch feet. Okay, you should feel a noticeable difference now between your two hamstring and glutes. That one that we were just working there, you should really feel like, oh, huh, I feel good blood flow, it feels nice and warm. Okay, so now I have right foot forward, nice bend in the knees, sticks are running on my shoulders, clavicles running parallel to the ground, palms down. And I'm gonna float on down, melting my sternum toward my thigh. Good, and I'm in my bare feet here. And so I can gaze down at my feet and see how active the muscles are in my feet as I'm working this balance here. I've got most of my body weight on that front leg. Inhale, exhale, heavy heel, reverse hinge, low belly and rise. Good. All right, we're gonna go down one last time. We're gonna incorporate that leg float. All right, make sure that we're running parallel shoulders, parallel hips. Okay, palms down, inhale. And then exhale, relaxing and melting. Stable front leg, nice bent knee. Find your body weight. Start peeling your back heel off of the ground until you're all the way on your tippy toes. Center of gravity is entirely over that front leg. And then the back leg is just gonna float off of the ground. Your shoulders are aligned over your sticks, helping you balance. Take a nice round of breaths here as you're standing on one leg. Good, and then slowly rock back to your heel. Allow that back leg to find the ground again. Pause, exhale, reverse hinge and rise. Good, okay, bring your feet together. March it out a little bit, nicely done. Okay, hip work, yay! <laughs> Laura, hip work, yay more stuff. See, the better you know this before January, you know exactly what we're... Right, yeah. I'm like, no, because you'll know exactly what you need to be doing. Okay, and it won't be discouraging because you can't do it. It's just will be very goal oriented. Okay, so our sticks are right at our midfoot. Okay, and the base of our sticks are in closer to our midfoot. Once we plant them, I would say six inches away from my midfoot, and then I extend my arms out. So you can see they're angled down to the ground. Okay, and my grip from my arms is slightly below my armpit. So I wanna feel as though I can activate through my lats to drive the sticks to the ground. You wanna have that sort of fire. And if they're up too, too high, you're gonna end up grabbing from your shoulders, more from underneath your shoulders. So you wanna be able to activate through your lats. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my left leg. All right, and that means my right leg's gonna be standing in the ground. Don't lock it out though, nice soft bend in the knee, okay? And I'm gonna bring my left midfoot over to the stick and I'm going to exhale and contract through my glute and hamstring and bring my knee up as high as I can and back down. Press that foot into the stick as much as you can. So a lot of tension into the stick with the foot and a lot of tension into the stick with the lat. Exhale, contract, knee gets as high as possible. And then the foot slides down. Good, I'm looking around the room and I'm checking for neutral spines. Okay, so think neutral spine throughout. Let's go ahead and switch legs. So right midfoot extends into the stick with some juice. So give it some mustard, exhale, contract and raise. And think neutral spine. So don't bend to the side, just contract lat to oblique as the knee comes up. 
This is where Laura is wondering, I thought this was a stretch class. <laughs> this is the Pilates with sticks part, exactly. Good, one more. Good, okay, walk those hips out. Hopefully you've got a nice little burn in the buns. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna do just a little bit more movement in our hips there, because we're gonna do more later. So we may as well keep with it. Okay, all right, so this one isn't so bad. All right, so we're gonna start with that same movement where we move out to the side, contract, and then stabilize and draw the knee to the front and back down. So exhale, contract the knee, pull toward the belly button and bring down. So we're gonna get into that other hip. Exhale, contract, pull across, keep the knee up and return. Good. Strong and stable hips. Nicely done. Good, last one on this side. So you should feel that in the other glute, yes? Just a little bit. Okay, switch legs. Good, so I'm taking the right foot into the stick on the side, contract through the glute and oblique to raise the knee up, then contract, pull the knee to the midline and down. All right, you wanna keep it at that same height. You wanna retain a neutral spine. All right, nicely done. Okay, the very last one, which we have not done in a while, is um, <clears throat> with sticks more to the front, okay? And what we're doing here with sticks to the front is we're gonna work on internal and external rotation in our hip, okay? And the sticks are like the fences, okay? so. So let's say I planted my fences right in front of my armpits, okay? And the base of the sticks are in just a little bit. I'm gonna lift my knee out in front and I'm gonna tap either side, each stick, trying to keep my knee as stable as possible. Okay, so the knee is staying in place, but here I was lifting my left knee, externally rotating to tap the stick, with the inside of my foot, internally rotating to drive it to the outside. And then what you're trying to get in touch with is that rotation in the hip joint, keeping the knee as stable as you can. So we aren't swinging the leg from side to side, we're rotating the femur in the joint. Good, Lala, nice job. Now, I have my left knee up. My right glute is on fire, <laughs> stabilizing my pelvis, yes? Good, okay. Switch legs if you haven't already. My Pilates students would normally be screaming that. Switch legs! What's that, Jane? <laughs> Good, so find this focal point. I'm looking ahead, not directly at my knee, just slightly above my knee, so I kind of see it in my peripheral. 
And I'm finding as I internally rotate, yes, to top the outside stick, I'm contracting through my oblique. Yes, contract, Laura. Good. Exhale, contract. Nice work. Okay. I hope everyone in the home viewing audience. Pretend you're. So in, in, um, externally rotate as the foot works toward the midline. Internally rotate, contract to the obliques to drive the heel out. You doing okay, Lala? Okay, nice work. Now, we're gonna set down one of our sticks. Uh, yeah, probably James. Okay, so now we're gonna new, learn a slightly new variation on combination movement. Um, I tested this one out a little bit and I think you guys will like it. Okay, so I have my one stick in my right hand and it is about at my midfoot. I'm gonna place my hand on my hips and I'm going to hinge forward and allow my chest to open up. Okay, now, as you allow your chest to open up here, so my right arm is going to the ceiling and I'm thinking about pulling my shoulder blade back and down toward my back pocket. Okay, rise. Let's try that again. So I don't want your shoulder to pop up to your ear. I want your shoulder blade to slide down your back as you do this and open up your chest, okay? Hinge. Right arm goes to the ceiling, shoulder blades sliding down just slightly as opposed to sliding up. Nice chest opener. Rise back up. Wow, Michelle, that is an open chest. <laughs> you are completely vertical, that's impressive. All right, exhale. Yeah, you all can watch. You can turn and watch how open she's able to get her chest. Look at that. That's a good shoulder. Really? So it's gonna get better on the other side? They don't look bad. <laughs> that looks pretty good. Okay, now we're gonna take that same right leg and we're gonna step back into a deep lunge and we're gonna roll the stick across our body, rolling the knuckles and stretching across the shoulder blade. Okay, let me give you a sideways view. Okay, so I was here, I'm stepping back into a lunge and pushing the stick out and across my body and then rolling my knuckles around to really open up your lat. Good, now we're gonna come out of that runner's lunge and right back into the hinge chest opener. So I have left foot forward, press through that heel, come together and then hinge, open the chest. All right, activate through your heels to rise. Step back lunge, arm out and crossing your body, rolling the knuckles forward, shoulder down, opening through the shoulder and lats. So I'm gonna show it for the front audience. As I step back, the arm extends, rolls across and then I curl the knuckles through. So as I turn and look, I see my fingernail polish. Okay, I don't see my knuckles or the top of my hand. That extra roll helps pull these muscles through. And then reverse out of that lunge, feet back together. Reset, chest opener.
reverse lunge or reverse hinge, step back lunge, straight arm rolls through. Good, and then feet back together. Let's switch sides. Okay, so let's start with the chest opener, opposite side. So, so hinge, James, pull your shoulder blade back down your back. So feel it going this way. So a little bit of tension in your lats. There you go, that's better. Relax through your chest. Okay, rise, good. So tension in your lats, feel them drawing down towards your hips as you're allowing your chest to open up. Okay, let's try that one more time. Inhale, exhale, hinge. Good, and rise. Okay, now we'll take it into our combination movement. We'll do this just three times, okay? So the stick is in my left hand. I'm gonna step back with that left leg into my lunge. Okay, so you ready? Step back into your lunge. Stick comes across, roll the knuckles to open across, pulling from your serratus and your lats. Okay, now activate through the right glute, pull it back up, and then hinge, opening the chest. Good, okay, reverse hinge. And step back, lunge, and roll across, twisting the knuckles. There you go, good, shoulder stays down. Activate through the glute of the front leg. So right glute for me, up, and last one, hinge. Good, okay, press the heels through the ground to rise. And last lunge, deep lunging, stick crossing the body, rolling the knuckles inwardly. All right, and then activate from the glute and hamstring and feet back together. Good work, turn those fans on. <laughs> All right. I have the stick at my hips, palms out, soft knees, and just some gentle rotations, pushing open just a little bit. Nice and slow. Okay, now start drawing attention to how open you feel as you rotate. If your feet are in parallel, where do your shoulders result when you are your most open? Are you perpendicular to your hips? Are you rotated past? Use your exhale and deflate that low belly as you rotate. 
as you press through with that front palm, do you feel your back lat in that shoulder? Helping with that rotation, yes? Good, okay, now we're gonna go down into a half kneel. Okay, so take yourself down into a half kneel. And give yourself enough space here with your stick. So if you had a short stick, a short er stick, that would be great. But what we're gonna do is now work on our rotation where we're trying to stabilize our hips, okay? So I am gonna rotate to my open side, all right? I'm gonna elevate the stick. So I'm rotating to the length of the stick. And I'm focusing on glute engagement. So other way, Christy, but don't hit my plant. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, so my open side is the knee that's down. Okay, I'm gonna exhale and twist. Okay, now here's where that back lat comes into play. You'll want to feel as though you're pulling from that back lat, the long end of the stick to keep your shoulders in parallel. Exhale, pull, pull, pull. Shoulders stay in parallel. They're tied to the stick. Good. And you're finding that twisting through your rib cage because your hip is pretty stuck, right? So I am on my right knee and I'm turning toward my right. Exhale. And my right arm is helping to pull, pull, pull my rotation. And back. So try to use a nice isometric hold as you find your end range here, exhale. And return, last one. And back to center. Good, okay, we'll switch legs. So now I have right knee up, left knee down. Grasping the stick in parallel. So the long end is on my left. That's the direction I'm rotating towards. Exhale as you rotate, left lat is helping to pull. Back to center. Exhale. Good, are you deepening your end range? And return. Good. What that? <laughs> she seemed like all over it too, which is kind of scary. <laughs> okay. Now since we're here, let's open up our hip flexors. Oh, finally we get to stretch. Whew. <laughs> all right. So I am opening up. Remember, your hip flexors attach our top and our bottom half. And they attach to the back side of our top half and the, more the front side of our bottom half. So you gotta stretch your spine away from your femur. Long story short, keep your spine as neutral as you can as you slide forward, letting your femur go back there, keeping your spine up here and feeling that stretch in the front of the hip. Good, and return. James, I just had a revelation. Oh, we... <laughs> We could go right into pigeon from here, folks. That leg is stretched down and out. We could cross our body with that front leg and melt our legs down toward the ground. Oh yeah, how do you like that? What's that, Chrissy? James loves pigeon too. 
Laura loves pigeon. Michelle loves pigeon. I know Lynn doesn't love pigeon. I'm sorry, Lynn. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Let's keep it clean. I have to hit this video is made for kids. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> All right, melting your chest down toward the mat if you can. Not clenching in your left quad. Good, now pressing your torso up off of that front leg as you're ready. I looked up and no one seemed ready. <laughs> All right, drag the leg through. All right, so now we'll go back to left leg up, right knee down. All right, so sticks in my right hand and I'm letting that right foot, my leg, my foot lay flat on the ground, okay? If I'm working and doing like that last rotational work, I'm up on the ball of my foot to activate from my glute a little bit more. But when I'm stretching and relaxing, I let that foot fan out. Okay, and now I'm gonna slide forward, opening up my hip flexor. Now, if y'all wanted, yes, I was just gonna say, James, if you wanted more stretching here, you can modify your stick and let it roll back. So with whatever grip, So maybe just slightly play around with whether you have it level to your shoulders or up a little higher. And then as you slide forward, stick slowly moves around behind your body. So that's just another one you could incorporate to open up your chest and shoulder. Good, okay, here we are. So I'm gonna walk my left foot across to right in front of my right hip. Okay, and I'm gonna begin by melting my chest down toward my knee. And then my knee is gonna fold down toward the mat from this point. Okay, and then I can melt down into my pigeon and then begin that process of relaxing through those muscle tissues that you're holding on to tension. Good. Now slide your hands underneath your armpits, press your torso up and away. Okay, now we're gonna find ourselves on our sides. I promise it's just stretching, James. We're gonna do side lying stretching. I promise. <laughs> Not Pilates. Okay, now I'm on my right side. So my left hand is gonna reach down for my ankle on my left leg. Now my goal is to start here that I wanna get my leg in parallel, my two legs in parallel. And then make an effort to release through your hamstring. Often, so often I have clients that have to stop because they just got a Charlie horse. So the goal, right? is to relax into all of our stretches. So my companion, my antagonist muscle to the stretch is my hamstring. Quads in front, hamstring on back. My quads don't need to contract. They're just gonna get squished, okay? That's their only job, to be quiet and get squished, okay? 
So be as quiet as you can in your hamstrings. Release. Oh, I just had to release my inner thigh tension because I was hanging on to a lot. And I'm using my bicep and my lat to pull my heel toward my fanny. Okay, now I'm gonna show you guys this view. So I'm right in front, okay? Now, as I'm able, I'm gonna allow my ankle to drop down toward the ground to try and open up and stretch a little bit of my inner thigh as I exteriorly rotate and it changes my stretch, right? I'm now getting a more inner thigh quad stretch back to neutral. And then I contract through my oblique and internally rotate and back to center. So your mind is all about what is my femur doing in the joint? How am I changing its orientation? And how does it change my four muscles that make up the front of my leg, right? In its stretch. So don't feel like, oh, I can only do it a certain way, right? So I flipped over onto my other hip now, and I'm starting with just my process of relaxing my muscles. Yeah. And my right hand is now grasping my right ankle and I'm bringing my heels straight to my butt and I'm releasing. Yes, uh-huh. <laughs> okay, so now play with this stretch. Exteriorly rotate, drop your heel toward the ground. Feel your knee lift just a little bit. And then interior, interiorly rotate as the knee goes down and the heel goes up. All right, nicely done. Hopefully we had no Charlie horses. Okay, now let's reach for our yoga straps. Can we do yoga strap roll-ups, James? Is that possible? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Christy. Okay, so take a moment to find your imprint into your mat. Okay, make sure that you find your neutral low back and relax between your shoulder blades. There's nothing worse than doing this yoga strap stretching and feeling tense when you do it. <laughs> so try and relax here as we go into it. We wanna be as calm and loose as we can. When we're not able to have someone else stretch us out and we're using a tool like a yoga strap, I mean, it's wonderful to be able to develop a discipline around using a yoga strap, but you also have to have the mental discipline to isolate the tension, okay? So I'm letting my left leg go down to the ground and I'm already thinking I'm heavier in my low belly as that weight is extended away, all right? So I'm not gonna let it rock my pelvis forward. All right, I've got my right leg into the strap and I'm releasing the weight of my leg into the strap. 
And then with my elbows in my rib cage, that's the only place that I want to be holding tension right now is in my lats, obliques, and biceps. As I do a little bicep curl to pull the leg up the ceiling, I'm strong and stable in my low belly. I forgot low belly. In my low belly, lats, obliques, and biceps, but I'm trying to be relaxed in my forehead, long and slow in my breath as I feel my hamstring ease and open. I'm gonna slowly lower my leg 18 inches or so. And then I'm going to internally rotate again, the femur and the hip joint. So now my foot is running more diagonally with my right toe shooting toward my left shoulder. The straps are in my left hand. I'm gonna plant my right palm down because I want to keep my right hip anchored into the mat. Release the glute, relax, and then slowly begin pulling the big toe toward the opposite shoulder. You may not have much range. That's okay. Try to not get tight in that glute. Keep the hip down. And go ahead and bend the knee, align the leg back over the hip. Straighten the leg again. Okay, and now we're gonna try and access our deep glute muscles. So I wanna keep that leg nice and straight. I wanna be soft in my glutes. I'm gonna transition the straps into my right hand because my leg's gonna fall directly across my belly button toward the left. So left palm is down and I'm going to hang onto the straps and try to access your deep glute muscles. You may feel this in your IT band too. But, but my real goal is those deep glute muscles. Good, okay, bring that leg back to center. We'll switch legs. Okay, right leg resting on the ground. Strap is on the ball or the arch of the left foot. Lower it enough so that you can allow your leg to go dead and release your tension. And then once you find that optimum kind of positioning that you're able to let go, then you can begin your breath work and begin to contract through the biceps to bring the leg up over the hip. Should be nice and straight at this point. If you feel your quad beginning to contract, lower your leg again and start after it again. Exhaling deeply into your low belly.
visualize that leg moving up, even if it's just a millimeter at a time. Good, now let the leg drop down about 18 inches or so, internally rotate. So with my left leg in the strap, I'm transitioning the straps to my right leg. Okay, I'm rotated so my left big toe is angled diagonally toward my right shoulder. Left palm down and slowly begin to contract. Again, make that glute soft, make that quad, those quads soft. And contract through that right bicep. Ooh. Accessing the outer hamstring, you should feel it in the outside. Kind of still on the bottom, but a little bit outside, running right along to the outer edge of the back of the knee. Good, okay, lower it again and reposition so the foot is nice and straight. All right, now we're gonna cross right over the belly button. The straps will be in your left hand for your left leg, right palm down. And again, before you begin crossing the body, release through the hamstring and glutes. And then allow yourself to cross the body with the leg, trying to access the deep glute muscles. Good, okay. Now we're gonna bring the soles of our feet together and just give ourselves a little butterfly moment here, rocking back and forth, allowing your inner thighs to relax. You can take your hands and gently press them open if you like. All right, now we'll get into our cross-legged piriformis. So we'll take the strap back around the right foot. And then with that leg extended, cross the left ankle onto the right knee. Bend the right knee and lace the straps over the top of that left leg, okay? Now, left elbow is gonna press into the left thigh, that bent leg. All right, and I want you to press through with that lat because you're trying to open that leg up, allowing that knee to ha -ha, get parallel with the ankle. All right, so strong framework from that lat. And now keeping your torso neutral on the ground, we're contracting through the biceps. So we are not rounding and we're not floating our head up off the ground. We have a neutral spine, a smooth forehead, a relaxed breath as we're contracting and pulling our right knee inward toward our chest, left elbows pushing the left knee away. Good, and three nice rounds of breath, and then we'll switch legs. So extend the legs, left foot in the strap now. Right leg bends to draw right ankle to left knee, right elbow into the right knee, bending the left knee now. And exhaling, calm in your torso, 
contracting through the bicep, pulling the left knee in toward the chest as right elbow presses right knee away from the chest. All right, well done. Okay, now we can set the yoga straps off to the side. Okay, now as we're able, we're gonna draw our knees into our chest and we're gonna roll them over to the left side. Okay, and bring them to the ground again as you're able. And then if you wanna add more here as your, your right leg is on top here, right? Go ahead and lengthen that left leg so make it straight underneath you. Okay, and try to get, again, as you're able, the left knee to run parallel with your belly button. Okay, then left hands on top of right knee, right arm is extended out, teed out from your shoulder, opening up your chest. You can take your gaze over to that right hand as left palm presses down on right knee, bringing it close to the ground. Now, if you can take more stretch into the chest, you can take your position from a T up to a Y. <laughs> So this is lovely. You get into your upper pecs by moving that arm up more. <laughs> All right, good. Let's unwind, bringing your hand back to your middle, rolling over. And now we're gonna take it the other way. Okay, so knees into chest, let them fall over to the right side, okay? All right, so lengthen that right bottom leg, draw your left knee parallel to your belly button. Right hand on top of left knee, left hand teed out palm up to the ceiling. So you can be gazing at the ceiling. You can be gazing over at your left hand, pressing gently down on that left knee, releasing in your low back. And then play around with that left hand from T, exhaling up to Y. And back to T. All right, releasing the right hand from your knee, rolling back to the middle, and then extending your legs the length of your mat. Arms teed out, eyes are closed. And just a couple easy breaths, inhale into the chest and exhale into out the low belly. All right, now extend your fingertips to the ceiling. <laughs> Palms facing each other. <laughs> Inhale into the chest. 
begin your exhale as you draw your palms, your fingers down toward your hips and begin peeling your torso one vertebrae at a time off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining for a great stretch class today. Have a good Sunday. Bye.